Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. This time I'm going to be talking about our pass through shielded Cat 6 and 6A uh, external ground uh, RJ45 plugs. These particular plugs are very uniquely designed, so it's easy to bond your cable shield. And they're going to fit all of our Cat 6 and Cat 6A shielded cable, whether it's indoor or even the big outdoor direct burial stuff. So um, this is a staggered plug. It does stagger the conductors. It is also pass-through, so the wires do pass through the front of it, and then they get shaved off with our crimper. And even though there's not a strain latch in the plug, that being a piece of plastic in here, there is a provision so that you don't have to disengage your strain latch presser bar on your true crimp uh, tool. And of course, there is also an external ground on there. And in conjunction, I'll be demonstrating uh, our new pass-through uh, crimper all-in-one version we call it the version two true crimp tool, uh, and it has an adjustable strain latch presser bar on it, although you don't need to adjust it for this particular plug and external ground crimp cavities, not to mention a really good stripper. So let's get to it and uh, let's uh, terminate some cable here. All right, so we're gonna go and terminate our uh, one of our cables here. This is category 6A riser shielded, and it's one of our thicker cables. And we're gonna unlock our tool and strip off the cable jacket. And this stripper works pretty darn good. It, it handles six millimeter to 8.00 millimeter cable jacket outer diameters. And uh, it puts a good score on there, but it doesn't seem to nick the conductors. I usually put about two and a half inches through there, and then you close the tool all the way. And then just turn it around one time. That's all that you need to do. Lock your tool up. And then when you start pulling your cable apart there, you see it's got a good score on it, but it didn't actually cut through that cable shield. Now that's pretty cool. The next step is to remove the drain wire. And then fold back the cable shield. All right, so once you got the cable shield all nice and folded back, and I do recommend you keep the XX excess on here uh, for the time being, the reason being that uh, when you put the plug on, you'll remove the excess at that point. Uh, the drain wire uh, is one way to bond to that particular plug, but it's actually not necessary uh, for this particular plug. All you have to do is fold back the cable shield. You can actually remove the drain wire uh, at the RJ45 end, which is exactly what we're going to do. Then you're going to proceed and remove any of the insulating wraps, such as this uh, polyester plastic wrap here. Uh, if there's any waterproof tape on here, you'd also have to cut that off. Now, when you are removing the spline on this cable, the best thing to do, and this is just in general with a spline, uh, is don't cut straight across. You're going to leave too much of the spline left over. So just fold your conductors into a star pattern. And then you're going to have uh, four wings on the spline that you need to uh, that you need to snip here. Rest your clippers on your cable jacket at a downward angle, and clip each wing. All right. So once you've got your spline wings all clipped, it's just a simple matter of twisting, and it removes. And as you can see, it leaves a very very nice um, uh, removal there. There is no excess spline sticking up which is going to help greatly with putting on a plug. The next step is to untwist the conductors and the piece of cable jacket that you stripped off earlier is a very good tool to do that. Start them with your fingers like so, and then just simply untwist each pair. Whoops, if I can uh, keep it from flying off on me. And then simply untwist each pair down for all four pairs. Okay, so once you get all of your pairs untwisted, uh, the next step is to remove uh, these kinks that are in the conductors. So the best way of handling that is, especially with these thicker 23 AWG uh, conductors here, is to use a smooth metal dowel rod like this, a screwdriver shaft to work too, and a work glove. And believe me, you'll, you'll appreciate the work glove, especially if you're doing lots of these guys, uh, you're gonna end up with a really sore thumb. Because what you do is you start at the very bottom of the conductor at the cable jacket, and then run it between your thumb and the rod. And about two to three passes is enough for these particular conductors. 
Okay, so the next step before you start working with the conductors is to prep up your plug. Now, it comes uh, out of the bag with this 45 degree angle. I have found that when trying to get the conductors in order and getting getting them into the plug, that it this this uh, collar sort of gets in the way. So bend it at a 90 degree angle or slightly past it so it looks like that. And that way it's not in your way when you're putting in the uh, conductors there. We're going to use the uh, T568B sequence. Uh, now, you can use either the A or the B. It uh, doesn't matter which one you use. Neither one is better than the other. Uh, just make sure that you're using the same sequence at both ends of your cable. That's the main thing. So the B sequence is white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, which will cross over a little bit, then white, brown, and brown. So check your work. Make sure that all these conductors are still lined up in the proper order. And you, and you want this to be kind of clean back here. You don't want stuff binding and crossing up on you. So, And you also like to make this a nice little ribbon, a multicolored ribbon. So keep working on them to get them all nice and smooth there. And then we're going to find ourselves a likely spot to flush cut. So reconfirm your sequence always. So white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. And they're still in the correct order. And you're going to want to have your plug handy because uh, this is where you start needing a third hand almost. And then you're going to flush cut the conductors right about there where they're at a nice stripe and are not uh, you're not seeing any excess kinks. And you're still leaving yourself enough workspace here with the uh, conductors to get them into the plug. And then with the plug flat side up facing you, you're going to put the white orange in from the top and the white brown will be at the bottom. And that's for the B sequence. And once you start putting them in there, they're going to automatically uh, stagger for you. So uh, you're going to want to reconfirm that these uh, conductors are still in a proper order. So the way you do that, of course, is uh, once they come out the, the nose here, uh, you want to see white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. And they are still in the correct order. Uh, the next step, and sometimes this is, you know, necessary. You might need to take some lineman's pliers and ovalize the end of the cable. Uh, that can happen uh, if you're dealing with a really thick cable. Now, this one is on the edge of needing it, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the oval cutout here in these electrical alignments players, and I'm going to inline form this cable jacket. And you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it, just enough to make it fit into that rectangular hole, because you got a circular cable and a rectangular hole back here. And then that's going to let you slide it in there quite a bit simple, uh, quite a bit easier. So. That's basically it right there. You want to slide it right up to this point right here. There's a ledge and then you'll see the conductors and then the golden contacts. So that's as far in as that cable is going to go. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is actually remove any excess of your excess foil. And I just, you know, right at the end of the plug is fine. It does not have to be under the collar or anything. You can just throw this out and then hinge up your collars like so. So that's in line with your plug because we hinged it down earlier to work with it. Now we got to hinge it back up. So there you go. It's hinged up. And the next step is you want to actually terminate this guy. That's where it's going to get the golden contacts forced down and the conductors are going to get flush cut. So we'll open up our tool. And as you can see, the strain latch pressure bar does engage. And it will go through that uh, rectangular hole there, and that, that's fine. We want it to do that because it's going to hold the plug for you uh, as you're finishing your crimp cycle. So at a certain point here, you're going to want to just put it in there with some light pressure. Make sure it's fully in there. And then start your crimp, and you can take your hand off the cable just like that, and then finish it. And then up all the way. You might have a little hanging conductor. That's okay. Lock your tool up, and then you'll have to inspect your work. So as you can see, the conductors are fully flush cut off the front of that plug and all the golden contacts are indeed down. So this is exactly what we want to see. And the next step is to crimp this ground collar around uh, the, the uh, cable jacket. Now, 
sometimes people use the ground collars to actually put the drain wire under it and then crimp it down. And that's if you're using the, uh, the, the ground collar as your grounding point. In reality, we're using the cable shield, making the uh, contact with the back of the inside of this plug, which is metal, to make your bond. So you don't need to do anything special with this ground collar other than crimp it down well. And so take your uh, clippers, close them up like this, and just use them to start that crimp. And just roll over these fingers here, do it carefully, don't gouge your cable in the process. And this takes a little bit of practice, like anything. Just get them started, pre-started like that. And then you're going to need to open up your crimp tool and make use of the rear ground cavity here. And the way you do that is you're going to, uh, with this particular cable, and it does vary by cable thickness, there's times when you can use just the first ground cavity uh, and crimp it uh, on there nicely. I uh, like with our outdoor shielded uh, Cat 6, uh, you only need to use this one. And there's times when you can get away with just using the small cavity too. But um, in this particular case, uh, we need to use both to start the crimp, then finish the crimp. And it has more to do with the cable thickness than anything else. So I'll put this in there so that uh, the uh, shell of the plug is all the way back against the semicircle, which is right there. And we'll put it in there like this. And then start to close that handle. And then that'll start our crimp for us. But it's not done yet. So the crimp is good and started. And now you want to switch to this secondary smaller cavity to finish up the crimp. Again, you don't have to always do it that way. It's just uh, this particular cable and this particular plug. That's how you have to do it. So once you pass it to the second ground cavity, give it a good crimp down. And there we go. We've got a fully terminated and crimped down plug. This uh, ground collar is uh, slightly indenting the cable jacket, which is how you want it to look. You don't want it too loose and you don't want those fingers mashing into your cable either. But it's on there and good and tight, not coming out, and it's ready to go and plug into something. So anyway, if uh, you have any questions, please uh, leave anything that you would like to say or any questions in the comments below. Uh, if you liked our video, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you see fit and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in and happy networking.